Hi, welcome to Mary is the new evangelization.com. My name is Tom, and today we're going to talk about the female priesthood, and this is because I just found out over the weekend Franciscan University, my school that I went to, um, graduated theology degree, has hired uh, a a part-time professor who is a female Episcopal priest, S. And they call her Mother Gentle. Mother Gentle. Okay? So, she's been hired to teach a theology course at Franciscan University. So, and we know that the Catholic Church does not believe in women priests. So, to hire a woman priest when you don't believe in women priests, what is that? I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense to me. Either you're saying that she's not really a priest, so you're not really caring about the fact that she is a priest in good standing in the Episcopal Diocese of Pittsburgh. You're just completely ignoring the fact that thousands of people look at her as a priest but you don't look at her as a priest. I mean, there's, there's something wrong with that kind of thinking. If that's where you're coming from, that I don't get at all, okay? I don't think that's even remotely Christian in the way you're thinking. Two, if you're saying that you do believe in women priests, and this is a way that you can sort of get away with it, because you're you're not, you know, whatever, courageous enough to stand up for your beliefs because you're afraid you're going to get persecuted or something like that. So this is the way that you're saying, yeah, let's take a look at women priests. Okay, now, uh, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe this is the way to do it. Because it sure has got a lot of people talking and discussing this issue. So that's what I want to say. Um, there have been people who have been outspoken in support of women priests who have gotten, I guess, sanctioned and women in the Catholic Church who have actually been ordained uh, via a ceremony. They're, they've been excommunicated. So it, it, there, there are serious consequences. So if this, is, if this is how Franciscan chooses to get the conversation going, well, then let's talk about it, okay? <clears throat> and, as, okay, so this Dr. Mother Gentle, from what I understand, is a devotee of the Blessed Virgin Mary. She loves the Blessed Virgin Mary and promotes Mary. Now, uh, so if she's promoting the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, as a female priest, then I think what that tells me is that the fact that she hasn't left the priesthood and she continues to have a relationship with the Blessed Virgin Mary. This, this woman is not repenting for being a priest. So she obviously feels that the Blessed Virgin Mary supports her and loves her and wants to use her as a teacher of Catholic theology uh, even and, and remain a priest. So... This is what she's thinking, okay? Trust me, Catholicism or Christianity should not be a business where, oh, this is my, my career. No, it's not a business, okay? Jesus did not form a business. He formed a church. And the church is about the truth and the Holy Spirit and love. It's life and death, okay? It's not about a paycheck. So, we, what, this is what I'm going to say, okay? Presuming that this woman truly loves the Blessed Mother 
and she's got some people to testify to the fact that she does. Dr. Mara Valley, obviously, great respect for her. Dr. Alan Schreck, okay, uh, Rebecca Weiss, you know, people are saying, you know, that she is, you know, very spiritual and very uh, devout and sincere and so anyway, I have no reason to doubt that, okay? And neither does anyone else. But the fact that she remains a priest raises the question, at least in my mind, does the Blessed Virgin Mary want women to be priests? Okay? We know the Catholic Church does not. The Catholic Church has said that. But the Blessed Virgin Mary, while she is the mother of the church, is also the mother of God, and she takes her orders directly from God, not from the Pope. So the independent mother of God, who has inspired this mother gentle in her priesthood as an Episcopal, is Mary asking us to take a look at this? Is Mary advocating for women and for women priests? This is a legitimate question, okay? It's a legitimate question. It's a hard question, especially if you're Roman Catholic and you hold to the belief that Jesus chose 12 men to be his apostles, which mean to be the priests. The men are to be the priests. Now, uh, that's true. Jesus did choose 12 men. He also chose women. We know that. He chose Mary. He chose Mary Magdalene. He chose Martha. You know, and there were many women disciples of Jesus Christ. So he had men disciples. He had women disciples. Okay, did Jesus distinguish between the men and the women? The men do this, the women do this. Did that, is that something in the um, gospel? Do you see a difference there? Do you see God saying to the women, this is what I want you to do, and to the men, this is what I want you to do? Is there any distinguishing between God's will for men and God's will for women? Or did he say, everybody, it doesn't matter if you're a man or woman, I want you to do this. So, you know, obviously, if you're a man and woman, I want you to do this, applies to many of the teachings of Christ. Love your neighbor, turn your cheek. Be patient, be kind, be forgiving. That applies to men and women, right? So the men and women disciples have a similar mission. Okay? That's obvious. But did he distinguish anything else? You know, men and women do this together, but I want women to do this, and I want men to do this. That's the question. Now, we know there's equality between the men and the women. We know that. that. That is so clear from Christ and how he treated men and women. He didn't treat women as inferior or second class. Or he didn't treat men as inferior or second class. So there's an equal dignity between men and women. We believe that. So if there's an equal dignity, that means that this side and this side are equal. And God wants them to work together. So, you know, he chose 12 apostles who were men. Okay, he didn't have the 12 disciples or apostles who were women. They were men. You can't really deny that. That's pretty obvious, pretty clear. So, 
he obviously had a very special intention for the men. Okay? He had a special, he had something very special and unique in mind for the men. Now, he also had a relationship with the women, apart from the men. Mary Magdalene spent tons of time with her. His own mother, Mary, okay, spent tons of time with her. So you have, you know, two unique ministries that were given to the men, to the women. And then, of course, there was the common ministry to all believers, regardless of male or female. So the question is, equal, equal dignity. So the ministry he gave to women, should there be an ordination element to that ministry, just like the ministry he gave to men, should there be an ordinate, there is an ordination. So the men are ordained to do what Christ called them to do. But the women are not ordained to call, to do what Christ called them to do. So it seems to me that women should not try to do what men do over here. Okay? Jesus asked the men to do that. So to celebrate Mass, the Last Supper, he instructed the men to do that. So any type of, you know, women ministry should not be a duplicate of what Jesus asked the men to do, okay? This should be something uniquely feminine and uniquely, uh, what I would say is like healing ministry, a healing ministry for women. Uh, women are very nurturing by their nature. You know, why can't you go to confession with father and then get healing prayers with mother? Why can't that happen? You know, why can't father give instruction to men in regards to being fathers, husbands, and mother give instruction to mothers in regards to being wives and mothers? Okay. And why can't this be an ordained ministry that isn't the same as this? Okay, so so I'm going to say this. If the Blessed Mother wants women to be ordained, she does not want them to do the same thing the men do. Absolutely not. That's where the women's ordination movement has gone wrong and gone astray. Okay, we need a uniquely feminine, motherly, pro-life ministry for women in the church that is equal to that of men. And I don't see, from my theological training, any reason that women can't be ordained for that. If you look at ordination in not so strict a sense, okay, uh, for me to go to confession to a male priest and then have the option to sit with a, a holy female woman who wants to pray over me, um, very appealing, very appealing. She might have some tremendous uh, gifts and guidance. Absolutely. You know, men who are married, you know, who maybe are having trouble with their wives or something like that. You know, what a gift that would be to the church. So let's not look at this as a negative Franciscan. Maybe they're trying to get the conversation going. And I'm trying to get the conversation going. And I think we got to approach it you know, in a very fair way and not be afraid to talk about it uh, under uh, threat of anathema. Okay, let's talk about it and let's make it happen because I think we're missing, you know, the Catholic Church especially is missing 
the the charisms of Mary Magdalene, you know, the charisms of our Blessed Mother. I mean, our Blessed Mother is more respected than Mary Magdalene in the Catholic Church. Um, you know, but I do think there needs to be definitely improvement. So, Mary is the new evangelization.com. God bless.